y evaluated at zero, right? So that just means whatever y is at time zero, when it initial time essentially, times e to the kt. Okay, so this is a class of solutions that solves this equation, right? Whatever k is, it has to come up and it's going to be inside this exponential, right? Again, that's why we want to hammer in this exponential stuff because we're going to be using it. Um, and then depending on whatever your initial condition might be, right, based on what your starting point is, that's going to change the equation, right? So let's say that at time zero, my population, you know, I might have 100 or something, right? Well, then I would put 100 in this slot, okay? Or if I have 1,000, you know, 2,000, whatever it is, whatever that starting point is, is the number that I put here, right? And that will just vary depending on what the object is, right? And K will also vary. Um, giving us this different class of solutions, right? And if you're curious, right, let's just, let's talk through this real quick just to make sure we understand that this does indeed solve, like make sense in this equation, right? So let's first, right, we wanna see what dy over dt is, right? We know what y is. Let's figure out what dy over dt is gonna be. So what is the derivative of this, of this object here, right? Let's remember, this is a number, this is just a constant, and this k here is a constant. So can anybody tell me what the derivative of this equation is going to be? That gets the multiplier. Natural log of t. Not quite, right? So remember, what, so what's the derivative of e? You guys can turn your chance to the it's over to the left. <laughs> it's e to the x. It's just itself, right? Right? Don't don't get too confused with like, oh, natural log e to the x. Like e to the x is the derivative of this itself. If I have natural log, that's I get one over x, right? E is not going to turn to natural log and the other way around. Now remember, again, and I'll I'll just write this out here so we can have it. Take the derivative of e to the x power, then I'm going to have I still write b to the x, right? But then I'm going to have the natural log of b. I multiply it by another constant, right? But it, just remember, this is kind of drill in your head, right? The derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. I take the derivative of b to the x, just gives me the same exact thing. Okay, so again, all that's over there. You need to refer to it for now. I know it takes a bit to like fully kind of get it. Um, but so with that being said, this, this is a constant, right? So the derivative, that, that's, that's just going to stay there. Nothing's going to change about that number, right? Now, e to the kt, right? The derivative of e to the t, e to the t or e to the x in that case, but it's e to the t here, is going to be, right? We just write it down, okay? But I don't have just t here, right? In this case, since we're taking the derivative with respect to t, I have kt. So what do I need to multiply this by? Let's get them. Good. I just multiply by a k. I break it down. Take the derivative of kt, so I get a k down here, right? So, what's the difference between y and dy over dx? It's just the k that's multiplying, right? Yeah. So our equation makes sense, right? dy over dt is y times k, which is exactly what we wanted. Okay? Does that make sense? So, just wanted to show you that makes sense. That that works. Well, actually. You know, do something similar to this later, but I wanted to introduce it. Okay. So now let's get into some of our practical examples here. Um, I have three sections here. I'll try to see if I can keep each one contained. We'll, we'll just figure out if that works when we get there. Okay. So, population um, is, is example of one kind of natural phenomenon that can be captured by this equation. Okay. So, in essence, right? I can write that the change in a population of something is equal to some constant, which I'll still call k, times the population at that time, right? The change, essentially, another way to say this is the change is relative. You'll see this a lot of times in the book. Something like this, which is just saying if I take the, the rate and I divide it by the population, it's constant. It's, a, it's the same number every time. Okay. So this is how populations 
model, right? So if I'm given um, a group of something, right? As long as I, someone tells me what this K is, I can easily kind of tell you a lot about this population of what it's going to be, right? And even here, right? We said that the solution to this equation is this, and we're going to have the same exact thing here. So I'm going to write P, and maybe I'll write P of T in this case, just so we can see it clearly. So this is the solution. P of T is going to be, and I'll write P, say it's the same idea, like same thing that's over here, except I'll just say this is the initial population, right? So you're starting at time zero. This is, I have 100 people at first, or I have 100 bacteria at first, or I have 100 zebras at first, or it's whatever, whatever the group is, okay? And then this is times E to the case, right? So whatever that constant is, that's how much the group increases each time, right? So we can go from here, um, knowing this about our population and how it grows to be able to solve things and kind of get answers. So what we're going to do um, is the book has an example, and you can review over that, um, like as you read through the section. I'm going to do one of the book problems, um, not not one that I've assigned to you guys, but a different one, um, so we can just kind of get more examples for the idea. So you can have a lot to review over. Uh, so this is problem number two in the book. So it has a bit of a long description. Um, so if you if you have the book, I encourage you to kind of follow along here. Um, but it kind of gives an explanation of where like E O E coli, like when that was officially named first, and who identified it. Um, it says that. Uh, so E. coli cells divide. Um, into two cells every twenty minutes. Um, we initially have all right initial population we're given in this problem that the initial population is going to be 50 cells okay so then the question so we have a few things to answer which I will go ahead and write here and I'll just write that that is clear so for part a so we'll just do these one at a time it's good. It's defined relative growth rate. Okay. And if you're wondering what is the relative growth rate, well, that is okay. That is what we call K. K is the relative growth rate. Okay. So in this problem, I need to figure out, given my information, what the relative growth rate is going to be. Okay, so let's kind of work through this. Okay, so we are given that the initial population of these E. coli cells is fifty total. So where where does that fifty go? Where, where does that fifty factor factor in? That's my problem. What is that going to be? Good. That's going to be my p b zero, right? That's the b zero I put into this population equation here. So we have P of T equals P zero, right? All right, P zero fifty E to the KT. Okay. Question. It says these E. coli cells divide into two cells every twenty minutes, right? So after twenty minutes, how many E. coli cells are? If, what is it? 100. Thank you. Good. So when t is 20, and we'll do everything in terms of minutes here. So t is 20 minutes. We get that p of t should be 100. Right? Essentially, we're doubling the population of that person. Okay? So our goal becomes, right, I, I, I have this t and I have this p of t. Can I use this to figure out what k is? Right? Well, we can, 
and we're going to plug in our information to see what we're good at, right? So we said <coughs> P of T is 100 when T is 20. So we get 50 E to the K. We don't know K yet. We want to find that. That's what we're trying to find. Times 20. Okay. So I just plugged in, right? I was given that information, so I'm just plugging in these numbers, and this is what I have for my math so far. Okay, what do I do from here? What is it? Cars uh, divide out the sections of the rectangle. Good. I think I heard a couple. Yeah, I heard a couple as well. I'll say that. But we're going to divide 50 first from both sides. We're going to do the natural log, and that's and that's good. But that's that'll be nice only if we have the e by itself, right? I would still have to worry about the 50 and everything. And let's just go ahead and try to make it simpler for now, right? So when I take 100 divided by 50, what do I get? Two. I get two equals e to the k times 20. Okay, now, as someone suggested, we do the natural log. So I'm going to take the natural log of both sides, right? So we're going to take the natural log of the left side and the natural log of the right side. Okay, so what's gonna, what am I going to get on this right side? Okay, good. And on this left side, I just left the natural log too, right? Okay, so how do I solve for k at this point? Divide, so we're going to divide 20, right? So k is natural log of 2 over 2. So that is how um, basically the rate of change and the initial population, like there's the population is related. Okay, it's by this constant natural attitude. This makes sense so far? Is this good? Again, a lot of our time here is just going to be working through examples, so uh, make sure you know how to do these. <laughs> Sometimes when it comes to like road problems, you know, like, oh, I'm like, oh, this, this seems like a lot, but. Um, really just try to break it down, you know, break down the equations you know, and it all will fall together. Okay, so that's part A. Part B. Is going to be, is to find an expression for the number of cells. Alright, find expression for number of cells. Okay. Okay. Maybe um let's see what we want to do here. Because we have our growth rate here in terms of minutes. Um so maybe just for the sake of making it work simple for now, I'm gonna go ahead and do this as minutes instead of hours. So we're going to find the expression for the number of cells that are left after t minutes and say, okay, just to, so that you can Okay, but of course, if, if you're working on a problem and ask for hours, just keep that in mind as you're kind of working through this. Um, if I want to change, so we have 20 minutes. If I want to, if I want to change this t in terms of hours, what would I do? Divide by 60. Right, so you would be working with one third instead of twenty, right? Because twenty divided by sixty is. Well, that would be the one. Okay, so let's just keep consistent though. We'll just leave there. Okay, so if we're going to write our expression. I mean, we already have it, right? We just didn't have the k initially. We need to find that. So I'm going to have fifty e, and now we're going to plug in. Um, if you wrote this, it wouldn't definitely be incorrect. Um, this, is, this is still the right answer. But there is a little bit of a simpler way to write this. Okay? And to show us, I'm going to just do something real fast and I'll see if you guys agree. Okay. I'll rewrite it like this. Okay? So the power is still the exact same. Right? If I multiply this 2 over 20 with the natural log of 2, right? That's one of our rules of working with t. 
I still get the same expression, correct? So everything here is still the same. But now I put in a form to where we could, we should clearly be able to see something happening, right? What's going to happen right here? Constant, right? Or it's it's at least the e and the natural log are going to cancel out to give us this constant here, right? To give us that shape, right? So we're going to be left with 50 times 2 to the t over 20. Okay, so this is my expression. Okay, so if I put, you know, if I put 40 minutes in there, then that would be 50 times 2 to the 40 over 50. So it'd be 50 times 4, which would be 2, which makes sense, right? Because if I have 100 cells after 20 minutes, and those all split into 2 after 20 more minutes, then you would have 200 instead. Okay? So this reflects our, our rate. Okay? Awesome. So from here, C and D um, are pretty easy. Let's go ahead and talk about those, though. So find so in the book, it's going to say find the number of cells, right? Which P of T is our number of cells, right? So I just want to, so we're just going to find P of, um, it says after six hours. Okay. So what is six hours in terms of minutes? How do I find that? Yeah, we'll find by 60. So six times 60, which is 360, good. So we're finding P at 360 minutes, essentially. Okay. What do I do? What do I do with 360? Just put it in for T, and that's it. That's literally all part C is. So I'm just going to get, so I get P of 360 equals 50 times 2 to the 360 over 20. 18, so we get 50 times 2 to the 18th power, which um, I don't know if 2 to the 18th power is on my head. Um, I don't expect anybody does, but um, if you want to calculate that out, that's great. Um, obviously, while you're working on your homework, you can have a calculator here just to make sure. Um, I gave you all odds, so you should be able to check your answer, and they usually will probably expand it, or at least have it written in some form instead of just like this. Um, so you can feel free to calculate it, just not while we're taking. Okay, part D says to find dp over dt at 360. You could, I mean, so, so what I do is we have to find this, right? So it says to find the rate of change after, the rate of growth after six hours. And the idea is how we do this. Use this one? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you want to take the derivative of this thing again, that's completely fine. And then multiply, right, or and then plug it in, that's completely fine. But we also know from this equation, and even from this one, that by rate, right, dp over dt at any time is equal to k times whatever p is at that time. Do we know what p is at that time? It's that 50 times 2 to the 18th power, right? So to get this number, I just need to take p of 360, which we already calculated, and then multiply it by what? Yeah, it's by k, which is what's k in this case. Or 20, yeah. So again, you can plug it if you want to, but that's that's our answer. Okay. In that case, right? That, that's really all it is, right? It's a simple, you don't need to worry about doing the derivative again because it's kind of already done the work for you for the most part. So nice and easy. Um now let's talk about uh, there is one last part. So maybe I'll cover that one. Some of the quality of the spell. 
So part E in this problem simply says, it says, when will the population reach a million cells? Right, so the question is, when does P of P equal Right? Or we have our equation, right? When is 50 times uh, 2 to the t over 20? Really? How would I find this? Multiply 50. So we're going to get 2 to the t over 20 equals a million divided by 50. Um, anyway, what that? Um, it wouldn't be 50,000. It's going to be, it's going to have a 2 on it somehow. So probably like 20, not, not 25. It's going to be, no, that's, is that too much? Let's see, because if you multiply, oh, no. if you multiply 40,000, yeah, it's 20,000. Yeah, do you just calculate it? Yeah, got it. Cool. So it's 20,000. Okay. Now what? All right. So you really have an option. We could, we could do, um, you could, right, when we cancel out E earlier, we could just, instead of doing natural log, we could do log base two and then cancel it. But oftentimes you just don't feel like doing that at a time. So, um, what I what I usually like to do is I just I still think the natural log of both sides. Now the reason I do that is because that's still going to allow me to bring this power down, right? Because of our rules of, of logarithms. So how can I rewrite this left side now with that natural log? Uh -huh. And now we can easily solve for t, right? So I divide natural log of two, and I multiply by 20. And I whatever this time is going to be. Okay, so that's our that's the idea, right? Um, hopefully you you know have some experience for solving these before. Uh, they usually cover these in a this in like an early class. Maybe not with the, obviously not with all the calculus part, but they may give you. They may just start and give you this thing and you work with it, right? We're just giving a little bit more copy to understand, right? Any questions here before we can move on? Got a few more things in this section to cover, so we'll just make sure to do that. Nice. Okay. So let's cover real quick. So, we're talking about population growth, right? We are we're expecting that K should be positive, right? Because we're saying that we should continue to grow, right? Um, that I should continue to get bigger over time, right? I, I hope that my my population, you know, it wouldn't do this, but it would do something like this, right? And more of this sort of exponential um, direction. Okay. In bringing back to the K, right? We're seeing the opposite thing, right? We're the K. I mean, the K is the word. We're seeing something kind of falling off, falling apart. So we don't want K to be positive in this case. We're wanting to look at something that's that's negative, right? So we still have the same equation, right? And they use again, I think it's just work. Right? But as in the in the population case, we should expect that k should be positive, right? We should expect k here to be smaller, should be less than zero, right? I'm wanting things to go down, right? So if I have m, which tells me the amount of uh, you know whatever I have at that time. And I multiply it with k, show me that the thing's decreased, right? But again, as last time, there's only one solution to this equation, uh, or a set of solutions, I guess, but all within the same count. M of t equals 
some initial amount, which I'll just know him of. Um, e. Again, keeping in mind that that k should be a negative value. Okay. So, with this being said, we can use this again as with the last problem to kind of work through examples and kind of be able to deduce something about the nature of, um, in this case, what the book often does that talks about uh, chemical sort of um, different elements and their decay rates over time. Um, it's all kind of interesting stuff, but we can use this equation to model that behavior. Okay, so let's go ahead and we can do kind of start the example here. Um, some of the beats of this problem are a little similar to the last one, so maybe we don't need to go as in depth, but. So, okay. So again, um, you can read the book, book's example it gives. I'll be doing um, problem number eight in the book. Here, right? So you can have that as a reference. Um, so we have strontium 90. has a half-life. When we say half-life, what we mean is this is the time when I have only half of my material left over. Okay? Has a half-life of 28. So, um, similar to the last one, you know, it might be good to pay attention to what the timing says on there. Um, here, everything's in days, so we can work, work it on the days. Um, you know, on the last problem we saw, oh, it says hours. Maybe I should do it in hours, but, uh, you know, it should be as simple as just divided by 60 or 24, depending on what you need. Okay, so for part A, wow, I wrote that up. It, has, it says a sample, so it says initial sample is going to be 50 milligrams. Okay, so the question is, so we want to find formula for mass of this strontium after Okay, awesome. Let's do it. Let's do part A. So help me out. How are we going to start? How are we going to set this up? What am I going to use? All right, so we have this 50, where does that 50 go? All right, we have our equation here, where is it going to go? Okay, so we don't, obviously, we, we're just going to start with some sub t, but we have um, 50, right, similar to the last one, e. Okay, good. Now, this says that strong team 90 has a half life of 28 days. So remember that says that. Um, after this much time, right, after 28 days, right, so let me write this over here. After 28 days of passing this equation, I should have half of my amount left over. What is half of my amount? 25. So, just like the last one, I'm going to use this information in conjunction with what I already have and kind of plug this, these numbers in. So M of 28 is 25, right? So we get 25 equals 50 times E to the K times 28. Okay. So what do we need to find? Okay. Okay. This is very similar to the last one, right? So let's just go ahead and do the second. What should I do first? We're going to find my 50. So I get, what's 25 over 50? One half equals E. And I'll go ahead and write 28K, right? 
we're working with numbers in this case where you know you can kind of maneuver which order you prefer. It doesn't matter that they're the same thing. Uh, there's certain classes where you can't do that, but we have we have it. Okay, that one. So over here, I just have the natural log of that half. Anybody agree with that? Yeah. So I don't really like, I mean, natural log of one half I can evaluate, um, but I might prefer to write this a little differently. Um, so let's talk about that real fast, right? If I have the natural log of 1 over 2, right? I have something divided by something else. So how can I expand this longer? Yeah, that's subtraction, right? Thank you. So it's natural log of 1, it's natural log of 2. What's the natural log of one? Zero. Zero. So this is actually just the same thing as a negative natural log. Okay, and that's actually always the case. If I have a natural log of one over three or one over four, one over five, it's just going to be negative natural log of that, right? Because it's one over that, and natural log of one is zero. So just a uh, nice little thing there. Okay, so let me write this over here. Okay, with that in mind, negative natural log of two is twenty-eight k. So what's k? So the reason I emphasize kind of doing this so much is because we expected k to be negative, right? And so I wanted to demonstrate clearly that k is indeed negative um, because natural log with anything less than uh, one is going to be a negative. And we can see that. Okay, so now I can just take that and plug it in. Okay. So we're going to get it M of T equals 50 E to the negative natural log of 2 over 28 T, which again, maybe I'll kind of take a little bit of liberty here and say, let me. Rearrange a little bit so we'll have the negative over 28. Okay, so I go there, same thing we talked about last time. All your powers are multiplying, so you can just feel free to kind of rearrange this even. What's e to the natural log of 2? It's just a 50 times 2 to the negative t. So that's my function. Okay. Also, you can just say, why did you know like to do it? They say, oh, okay, well, I see this natural log up here, so just, those cancel and that too can work out and everything else they do. There's a lot of extra have that, just to leave the E and the natural log too. So that's the answer to that part. Okay, that makes sense? Okay, good. Okay, so we can keep that up. Okay, so part B and part C. Um, it just says find the mass remaining in 40 days. So just like the last one, you would plug in a number and see. Um, and it says how long does the sample take the sample to decay to two? That would be the same thing as this one, right? I just say when is m of t equal to two, and you solve for it. Okay. Do I need to work that out, or does that make sense? Um, it's a very similar process. I want to make sure we have time for everything else here. So. Uh, Yes, no, makes sense. Just do the same process. I'll go a little bit more into the Newton's law pooling here because uh, that's probably the harder, harder of the, the things here to understand and work through. Well, um, we see it all in math quite a bit, so I want to make sure students understand. Okay, and next. So the last of, well, the last, uh, there is there is an extra um, 
piece of this that I want to talk about and cover. Um, although it doesn't necessarily, I won't really test you on it too much. Um, he would have seen it a lot more in the past, but um, we'll cover it anyway. So this next part. Uh, So what is this? Well, you see a pattern, right, with everything here. Um, so we're going to have the same sort of equation. I'm going to use, I'm talking about temperature now. So we're going to have dt over tiny, big D, big T over little t, right? And this is going to be K times T, but, but there's a slight change here. I get this. Okay, so what we're seeing here, and let me let me go from the label. So this is Newton's law of cooling. Um, this equation, um, and what this says is that the temperature, right? Relative, of course, to where the surrounding temperature is. There might be a, you know, whatever that is. Uh, we want to kind of take them off and look at the change between them. Um, is relatively, like it's proportional to its slope, right? Just as the others are um, by some constant change, right? And so we can use this in a lot of interesting ways. Um, I think the ones that I have you do in the section talk about um, putting a roast turkey in an oven. And like take the cold drink for refrigerator. So those are fun, you know, those are fun ideas. Um, but just understanding, you know, at this time, if I leave, if I take this object from this environment and put it into a new environment, leave it there for a while, what's the temperature gonna be after so so, so much time? I can calculate these things using this equation. I know I have an understanding of what the temperature is, right? Maybe initial temperature and what the surrounding temperature is gonna be. But I can use that information to find it. Okay, now this one looks a little a bit different, right? Because now since I have this minus TS, it might be hard for me to get like a, a general um, form for this. But we can still do it, right? And I'm going to show you that we can by making a substitution. So I'm going to let y equal. T minus T X. Okay. If I take the derivative of Y, what am I going to get? Uh, this becomes zero, right? Because if the surrounding temperature should be constant, right? Hopefully you're not in an environment where um, at least in an ideal situation where the temperature is going everywhere, because you can't really do much of that. This part becomes zero. That's completely true. This is a variable, right? So I don't know what it is, but I, I can still take the derivative of it. That is going to become the derivative of big, big T with respect to T, right? So I just took the derivative of both sides. So dy over dt is d of big T over d little t, right? But t of s became zero, so now we can see these two things are the same, right? So this dt over dt is the same thing as dy over dt, right? But we just named this t over t s, t minus t s, and y, right? So we have dy over dt equals ky. Hey, how about that? That works out. Do we know the solution of that equation? Oh, oops. We've written it several times now. Y zero to the gate, right? This is this, this extreme left hand, extreme right hand side are the equation that we've been talking about this whole time, right? So the solution is this. Now, obviously, I don't want to do a y. I'm going to talk about this temperature t here, right? So let's kind of plug things back, right? 
So y, we said, was t minus ts. So I'll just add some of that back there. T, t of t, right, so let's change it, minus the surrounding temperature equals y of 0. Okay. y of 0, right, is simply just whatever t of 0 is, right, minus the surrounding temperature, right? Because I just plug zero into both these things, except this is a constant, so it's all just double things. I get y of zero and I get t of zero here, right? So y of zero in this case becomes t of zero minus ts to the kt. Okay? I want to get t of t by itself, so big t of little t by itself, so what should I do with that minus ts? Add to both sides. Fantastic. So now we have an expression for, and this is the equation you're going to want to use to kind of solve this, this, these problems, right? The temperature at time t is going to be the surrounding temperature plus the initial temperature, which I'll write as t0, or maybe we can even put to, right, just like from earlier, minus t s e. So this is our equation, right? Not really too much different from the other ones, except now we just have to worry about that surrounding temperature, right? Which if the surrounding temperature is zero, hey, that's really easy, but it's not going to be. Okay. So. Um, like I mentioned, you're assigned to do number 15 and number 17. Um, it's not a word. That's, that's in the extra problems. Uh, those aren't mandatory by any means, but if you really want to understand the subject a little better, I'll do it. Uh, there's no people. Okay. But I'm going to do number 16 for us right now, which says, um, we have a murder investigation. Let's see. Um, the corpse temperature was um, it was found. Well, actually, um, well, yeah, was not found to be. I can say it was uh, thirty-two. Celsius, and that's going to be 30 p.m. And it's going to be 30.3 degrees Celsius and hourly. Normal, normal body temperature. Celsius at least is 37 degrees Celsius. And it says the surrounding temperature, I'll go ahead and save some time. TS, the surrounding temperature. Is Twenty, it says 20.0 degrees Celsius. So we have 20 degrees Celsius. Okay. The question is when Oops. Okay, so this is a bit of an interesting question here, right? So we're we're given that at 1:30 p.m. the corpse temperature is 32.5 degrees and it was 30.3 degrees an hour later, right? Um, it's normal body temperature is supposed to be 37 degrees, right? But the body's supposed to be regulating itself. Um, it shouldn't be uh, adapting to the surrounding temperature. Um, but that's currently what it's doing, right? So our goal is to figure out when this murder 
took place, right? And to do this, right, we are going to apply Newton's law of cooling to the sound. So let's work, let's work through it, right? Let's start off by, let's take our numbers and kind of plug them into our equation, right? Because this is supposed to be the differential equation that we're working from, but this is a solution, so we can use this, right? So first, what is what is TS supposed to be? 20 here. What is what is T0 supposed to be? Well, we do, we we have that, right? That's 37 degrees Celsius. We want to know when it took place. Right? Its initial temperature was 37 degrees. We just don't know when the last time was that it was at 37 degrees, right? We're trying to figure that out. Okay, so TO is that's 30, 37 degrees Celsius. Okay, so what we have is that if I plug these numbers in, I'm going to get T of T equals 20 plus what is TO minus 20 or minus the starting temperature? 70. Does this make sense where this came from? Um, this is just the surrounding temperature, and this is 37 degrees. So that would be our story. Okay, now we are given two things, right? The first thing we're given that is that at 1.30 p.m., which is some amount of time which we don't know after the person was killed, right? The temperature is 32.5, okay? Um, maybe to not confuse us, I'll give, I'll put a different letter after an hour. Maybe I'll give a little number on the, on the bottom of it. So we have some time, I'll call it T, I don't know, uh, T, T1, okay? And at this time, of T1, right? Because we're, we're wanting to know, this is our initial temperature, so we're trying to figure out what the time, like how far away we were from that initial time. T of T1 is supposed to be 32.5 degrees Celsius. Okay? Good. Now, um, you know, this just says an hour later, so maybe we'll do all of our calculations in hours, right? So now we say an hour after this T1, right? So we're at time T1 plus one. What is my temperature supposed to be here? Thirty point three. Thank you. So, right, our ultimate goal is to find what T1 is supposed to be, right? There, there's going to be some constant K, um, which we could try to find, and maybe it would be helpful to get that first. Um, but our ultimate goal is to get this T1. So let's take, let's take these things that we have here and kind of plug them into our equation, right? So we're going to move over here. We're going to that. Okay. So one of our equations is right at so at t of t one, right? Just at that one thirty five, thirty two point five degrees Celsius. This is equal to twenty plus seventeen t to the k times t one. But I'll lost everybody thus far. I just plugged in T1 and I plugged in 32. Okay. Second, we know that at T, when I add 1 to T1, 30.3 degrees Celsius is my temperature. But that should be equal to 20 plus 17 E to the K. T1 plus Okay, this looks a little bit interesting to figure out. Um, so I'll leave it, I'll kind of throw it to you guys for the moment. What ideas do we have to solve this? 
Well, there's not anything. Um, not necessarily, and I'm not sure if that'll help us as much in this case. So we don't, we're not really focused on, we don't really want to convert anything. Like we can't really make our situation much simpler than this at the moment. Our goal is to say, I need to try to find this T1 or maybe even K. I need to find one of them. So the question is, how should I do that? Can we start by moving all the terms to the right that both equations? Um, maybe not, maybe not, so I, I think you're on the right track. I wouldn't necessarily set them equal to, maybe not equal to zero though. Um, you notice we just have these plus 20s hanging here, right? So maybe what I want to do first is I'm going to take those 20s and I'm going to move them over. Okay, so let's just go ahead and just get all the E, the gross part by itself. Okay, so if I take 32.5 minus 20, that's going to give me um, what is that, 12.5? And I'm going to get 17 E. Okay, and we're going to have, see, 30 point, what is 30 point 3 minus 20? Equals 17 E. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, um, this K and I'm going to distribute it. So I'm going to get KT1. Oops, K kind of like that. That's still inside of X line. X line. Okay. Now, yeah, so we do have the option um, where we could take these and we could, you know, try to manipulate the numbers a little bit to set them equal to each other. Um, what, I, what I also kind of see here, right, is you know, again, I can find K if I want to, but I don't, or well, actually, we couldn't find it. Anyway, <laughs> um, let's see. This K times T, T1 thing here is a problem. I don't want that there, right? Let me ask a question. If I have E, so I have E to the, to the K T1 plus K. Is there any way that I could rewrite that? So that is, so that might be helpful, right? I'm going to replace that here real fast. I'm going to do this. Now notice that this is this is the same thing here, aside from this plus the e to the k on the other, right? So what would what what could I do maybe maybe let's take right remember uh, when you learn to solve equations and stuff you kind of had you had to learn substitution which we could try to do or you had an elimination idea um, where as long as you kind of added an equation and we'll hold equation to each other you can do that um, what we can also do is is as long as I do the same thing to both sides, I can also multiply or divide them. You can also substitute both. Multiply it before the substitution. That's good. Yeah, that's true. Actually, that might be a little bit easier in this case. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so we could actually, yeah, absolutely just take this 12.5 and plug it in here, right? Because if that's 17 e to the kt1, that would be, then I can just take that and plug it in, right? What I was suggesting earlier was, I could also just take the two equations and divide them like so, um, and that would give you the same result. But yes, what's going to end up happening, right, is I can take this 12.5, plug it into the 17e k1 kt1, and so I would get 10.3. So maybe I'll cross this part out for now. Um, this is going to be 12.5 into k, right, which would end up we divide 12.5, right? We're going to get e to the k equals 10.3 divided by. So, how do I solve for k? Just take the natural log at that point, right? So, 
I guess to boil this whole thing down, right? This is a system of equations, right? And we have a lot of ways to solve systems of equations, right? So just try to, to think of a, lot, a lot about, you know, what possible options do we have? Um, you know, we can always do substitution. These were the same, so we can do that. Um, we can always try to do like multiply something or divide something. Um, but the substituting here easily gave us access to this k value. Yes. So I mean, it's probably wrong, but I'm just curious why. Mm -hmm. Um, well, the issue is, is that this, I mean, in some cases, maybe this is a starting temperature, but we're, this problem, we're saying that there's some, this 37 is supposed to be the starting temperature. So we need to do. Um, not necessarily, I think it, it, it depends on the situation. So you really need to kind of work back and test it, right? Because um, if you set up your equation like that, and like you say, oh, I find the K for that situation, and then you try to say, well, let me extend it back, mm -hmm. you might get into a bit of a confusing situation. Um, so it's, I think it's better just to kind of say, here's this starting time, right? And let's go from there to see um, what, the, how long that is, and we'll just take it away from one third. And that'll be our answer. So we get K is the natural log of 10.3 over 12.5, right? So now that we have that, right? Again, we have these two equations. And if I know K, I can just plug it in and I can solve for T1. It might take a bit, um, but we can solve for T1, right? So let me, let me take this one real quick. And we'll do some calculator work so we can um, kind of cut down the time here. 17e to the. Um, now, if I take this natural log and I put it in for k here, what's going to happen between that e and that natural log? They're going to cancel each other. So I can just write this as instead of e, I can put 10.3 or 12.5 in here, and then I'll make it Right? Which now this becomes an equation I can solve for t1. Um, so we'll do that real quick by subtract 20, and then we divide 17. This, um, and then we want to take the natural log of both sides, um, which is going to leave us with t1 equals the natural log of 12.5 over 17. Okay, anybody want to help calculate that to make sure we're correct here? Let's see. Um, that's going to be the natural log of 12.5 over 17. And I'm going to divide that by 10.3 over. Okay, which gives us 1.5. So it's about a little over one, one and a half hours, right? So all in all, that was a bit of a longer problem, um, but um, that's probably the harder of those two there. The other one should hopefully be a bit more intuitive. Um, but the general idea is still there, just plugging in and solving, right? Obviously the work will In terms of solving the equations, there's a bit more to do. But we get T1 is just like about 1.5 right here. So, um, you can calculate, calculate the exact, but the answer to this is it took place, I'll, I'll just say a bit before, you know, a bit before noon. Right, because if you start at 1.30 and our time is 1.588, that means we go an hour, about an hour and a half back. Okay, does that kind of make sense? Sorry, I took a little bit, but uh, I want to take a slow uh, as much as possible. I have, um, I don't have anywhere to be right after this today, so if anybody wants to ask about any problems or work with they can stick around. Uh, so it's okay. Okay, fantastic. Let's go ahead and wrap this up.
real quick. This letter section um, talking about something that really is a manual work problem. Sign about this, but I um, still need to mention it. And then we'll take a break. Okay. So this is the last part of this section. It's the last thing it talks about, um, which doesn't as much directly tie in as you might expect it to, right? Because at first, it presents us with an equation which looks something like this. Ah, e though here. We get something like this. Okay, so this is this is kind of the classic equation um, to calculate how much interest you get off of putting in an initial amount AO um, after with a given rate, you know, given interest rate, a given time, right? How much time? And then n is uh, let's see what else. Kind of, um, I'll just say period. Kind of period of the pain, right? Because oftentimes, um, you know, sometimes people get an interest, their interest increase, you know, uh, kind of comes through every week or every two weeks or maybe every month or every, every year or um, bi weekly, that sort of thing, right? And so N is the number that we use to kind of denote. How much, how long it takes in each case. Okay, so to, to just show this, kind of talk through this, I'm going to use um, the last example in this section, which is number 20. Okay. And we're going to kind of get to the point of, you know, how does this tie into what we've been talking about? Well, so in number 20, um, the goal here, again, I didn't want to do the exact example of the book, but um, we have a thousand dollars borrowed eight uh, percent so our goal is to find now um, at the end of so I'll say back to three years and then it says um, if First way is annually. So we'll start with that. Okay. So we have some numbers here, right? So let's kind of figure out where they're going to fit in, in our equation, right? So what is this a thousand? Where's this a thousand going to go? What's that going to be? Yeah, it's going to be a not. It's going to be this initial. It's going to be a not. Okay, where's that eight percent going to go? It's going to be my R. Now, whenever I put it into R, we need to keep in mind that I don't want to write it as the percent, but I want to divide it by hundred. I want to see what the decimal looks like. So we're not going to use eight percent. We're going to use zero point zero eight percent divided by hundred. Okay, so that's my R. Okay. What is the time I'm using? Two be three. Fantastic. Awesome. So that's going to be. We're going to use these things, right? 
in conjunction with this, which will be annually, monthly, whatever it is, to tell us the end to be able to calculate this in exchange. And now we don't need to actually go all the way through the workshop how to set it up, right? So whenever we're calculating annually, my A of T, right? Which is at A of three in this case, right? We're gonna do A zero times one plus, okay. Now in, whatever we're talking about annually, right? Our N in this case is gonna be the number, right? We're kinda, you're wanting to say, okay, what is my object? Like, what is the timing that I'm working with? And how many of those things fit within a year, right? So if I say annually, there's only one year it fits in a year, right? So n is going to be one in that case. So I'm going to get one plus 0 0.08 to the one, right? And this is over one technically, to the one times three. So if I would calculate this, this would give me the interest rate after um, three years annually. Then it asks for quarterly. So if I'm doing quarterly, what is it going to be in that case? What do we think? Four. Yep. Yep. If there's four quarters in the year, so a three thousand times one plus zero point zero eight over four, which you could write as zero point zero two, right? And that's going to be uh, four times three. And so that would be my new value. Okay. Um, and in each case, you're gonna you'll do the same thing, right? So it's gonna depending on what you do, you're gonna change the interest rate, right? The main goal of this problem, and even the example in the book, is just to say, let's see how it changes each time. What you're gonna find is that it's going to over the first few tries, it's gonna increase pretty drastically, um, or there's gonna be a significant growth. So maybe I'll at least write these first couple. Um, so it's a thousand one point oh eight. So this is about one two five nine point seven yeah seven one dollars after after that year compounded annually. Um, the next one we're gonna have one point zero two, and that but that's gonna be to the twelfth power. So we're gonna get one two six eight. So there's a good, there's a good decent amount of money, you know, which is very useful, you know, this time, you know, if it's nine dollars, it's not else. Um, and we continue to see growth, we continue to see it moving, so maybe to save some time, we'll just go ahead and wrap this up here. Um, I'll just ask, if it's monthly, how much what's the end going to be? Well, good. If it's uh, weekly, what's that going to be? 52, because there's 52 weeks in a year. Um, daily? Right. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. Maybe if it's a leap year, like 366, that's true. Okay, but there's a last one here. Continuously. So that means that I don't just do it every day. I don't just do it every. We could try to fit hours and minutes and seconds in there, I guess. But where it's just constantly doing it, right? So in n isn't just going to be a finite number in this case, n is going to approach infinity, right? So I'm going to take this equation and I want to look at the limit and n approaches infinity of, so maybe I'll put our, um, our numbers in here so you can see it. So we want to be able to say something about this, okay? Now, we talked about this in the initial way, right? There's something a little familiar about this portion, and maybe for the moment, I'll go ahead and move this point A, point A away, and I guess it should be freezing. Um, but we're going to take these couple of numbers away, and we're going to still look at this by itself. One plus one over into the end. You know what this limit's supposed to be? Not the natural logarithm. Come on, 
five things that we talked about this at the end. The number eight. This is the definition from the number eight, right? And even though we have some numbers in various places here, it really actually doesn't matter too much. What's going to happen is, is those numbers are just going to be taken into the exponent for e, um, funny enough. And uh, in the next section, we'll talk about real quick. Um, you can actually, you know, if you want to do this limit for yourself, you can um, and show that it'll do this. Well, what's going to happen is I'm going to get 1,000 e to the 0 0.08 times 3. And in general, right, we have this equation, which is for interest over some finite period, right? So where I have some finite number that I put it for in. But if I want to do it continuously, then my equation is going to become A equals AO E to the R times. Okay? And that's, I mean, that looks exactly like what we've been doing, right? It's the same thing. That can, if we have an interest that's growing continuously, it fits into that same pattern, right? Which is all very nice. It's very cool how E pops up in all these places, even though it's not like a normal kind of number. So, of course, you can't put the number if you want to. This is, that is the biggest that, you know, of course, you can go because you're compounding it a lot more, um, which is going to give us E equals zero times three. One, two, seven, one. Hey, we got three more dollars. How about that? Okay. <laughs> okay. Cool. <laughs> that section took a little while, um, but I think it needs to. Um, this is one that a lot of students start with, so I'll start with through and walk through it. I'll let you guys have 10 minutes here, and then we'll get back and we'll do um, one of the most abused rules in mathematics. So stay tuned for that. Thank you. 